I'm trying to fit as many content for this vlog because we're going to be away for like two weeks. Vlogging is going to be out of the game. For this vlog, it's going to be a helter-skelter of different contents. Like I'll be doing a pickup, I'll be doing a review. I'll be talking about the newest piece from our second collection. It's going to be fun. Please like this video and subscribe. It's a Saturday. Oh, it's a Friday. So we thought of going in the city. And I don't know what we're gonna do, but I feel the need to go out because I have to wear my outfits. <laughs> there are times that you really want to go outside and just feel the world around you. I am excited to be wearing this again. Since it's the last week of winter, I might as well go hard with my fit. I am gonna be wearing this. Maleficent jacket from Rick Owens. There are so many pieces that I've been loving from the new collection. I actually love the extreme designs lately. However, this is more crowd friendly. This is more well behaved. So I'm wearing a dress from Rick Owens. I'm gonna be meeting a friend and we'll be having some light lunch and of course some good wine because it's been a long week and it's really freezing outside. It's the worst when it's cold and there's like wind. I was gonna wear the jacket from our clothing line. I think it wouldn't give me that warmth though. Maybe on another day. So the annoying neighbor just left with her annoying car. This is gonna be the jacket that I'm gonna be wearing. Crowd friendly, but still menacing jacket. I mean, look at it. And can I talk about the skirt that I'm wearing? Just a classic hourglass pillar skirt from McOwens from the Glitter Collection. It's made from this beautiful velvet velour. When I bought this online, I thought it was like floor length, but then it wasn't. Do you ever get that feeling like that you have this vision in your head and it turns out not the same? You're drowning with your delusions, <laughs> expectation versus reality. I'm beginning to get really irritated with buying online lately. I just want to show you the bag that I'm going to be wearing today. This is from the archive. Can I say archive? Because this is from 2017. Balenciaga 2017. It's called the Balenciaga Air Hobo Bag. This was Demna Vasalia's earlier collections. I remember having a major, major crush on Demna's work during those years. And this bag is one of my favorite from that collection. I think this was inspired by the Moroccan chairs. It's crazy, it's like a UFO. It's like a massive piece of black dough. It's silly, it's, oh shit. It's super ugly, but I love it. I feel complete with a big bag. I have a lot of stuff to carry. It's secondhand, of course. I can't afford buying like new pieces at the moment because we are planning to go to your priorities. So this is my hair. I need to go to the hair salon soon, right? Yeah, I don't want to spend too much money on futile things at the moment. If I can get away with this crappy hair, then I, it's not the end of the world. Living in Brisbane, it's nice and not nice at the same time. Like food-wise and people, it's perfect. Fashion-wise, it's boring AF, but whatever. I'll see you guys later. Doors closing, please stand clear. Lorenz is wearing the second um, collection, the second piece from her second collection.
wearing my helmet lang bag. Oh my god, this is probably the best place that I've ever been. We're at the City Hall in Brisbane and I just love this. Such a vibe. It's like we're in Europe. It's a Saturday and we're going to the beach today. This is just a low-key photo shoot. It's just a two people team, me and my partner. I don't know who's gonna be the model, but this is not a beach outfit, but we're there to shoot. So this is the jacket and this is called the Aguila jacket from Tech Hotel Collection 2019, 2020, I don't remember. High waist pants from Rick Owens. And I think I'm gonna be bringing my ugly bag of trash from Balenciaga. Makeup is on. I have some followers on Instagram who told me to do like a makeup or like a beauty routine thingy, but I don't know, I don't feel confident. I'm the last person to give advice for like skincare and makeup because this is... I think we're ready. Very sunny today, as you can see. This is like the time, like you don't know if it's gonna be cold or hot. So you need layers, you need like um, transitional outfits, I guess. So that's what I'm doing. Laren is approaching. Bitch, get in. cold today. It's sunny but it's very cold. Oh my god, dun, 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 dun. look at the beach. It's easier to walk here. We're still looking for locations. I think we're lost. Oh my god, ito na. Perfect. Perfect to. Oh my god, white sand, Boracay. Oh my god, ang ganda. Welcome. Perfect day, we're feeling good. Stay there. Lorenz showing us some styling skills. So the jacket has multiple zippers and you can style it in so so many ways. This is one of my favorites because it's like a cape. And this is the venue, this is the um, location. I don't know how Australians do it, like it's so cold but they're like half naked. Super freezing right now, oh my goodness. And the beach is sort of empty. So I'm just taking some clips. Yeah, so yesterday we went to Brisbane in the city and Loren wore the second piece from her second collection. I have to say that I'm 
quite impressed with how he styled it. It's giving off Balenciaga slash White Project vibes. We just finished the shoot and I'm so tired. I'm so excited to publish the photos and videos. This is my outfit. such a struggle to like walk because of um, the sand. I didn't expect that. Of course, it's a beach. Um, I also want to talk about the benefits of archive fashion. Last week, I did an interview to an institution, a fashion institution and a fashion magazine that I truly look up to. People are starting to notice that my channel, my style is geared towards archival fashion. There are others who have a massive collection, more remarkable pieces. Comparing my wardrobe to their wardrobe, my wardrobe is just a tiny dot. It's an honor to be validated and to be recognized. There are days that I have this imposter syndrome, like I'm having these questions, what is the purpose of this channel anyway? But at the same time, I have to understand that the content that I'm bringing to you guys is still niche. And I actually love doing this content because I'm able to like share some knowledge and inspiration, let's just say. So I think that's enough. In today's video, I'll be sharing the reason why I love archive fashion and why you should. Let's do this. Hello. It was a chore to set this whole thing up. Whenever I watch vlogs, it always starts with a coffee. Why not a glass of wine, right? So I'm here to talk about the reasons why I love archive fashion or what archive fashion did to me for my personal style specifically. For my outfit, a Rick Owens blouse jacket and this is from Dark Shadow Rick Owens. So what collecting archives did to me? Number one, I stopped following trends. Yeah, sure, I love fashion for what it is and I observe trends. And if you have the habit of checking out what's happening every season, you kind of get the gist or the common denominator of what each brand is doing at that season. It could be cowboy boots, it could be metallic, florals for spring. So yeah, I do, I still do observe, but I don't apply it for my personal style. Hence the very limited designers that I collect. And I've been blogging since 2009. I've done all the trends. I've tried experimenting with colors. It was all too much for me. I've just decided to go back to my roots and just strengthen my personal style through avant-garde. In your life, you'll have to go through phases, which is fine. I have somehow strictly filtered my, my interest to certain designers. I think part of it is being older. You just get tired of all the nonsense and junk that you see in fashion. And I think it's important for someone who loves avant-garde to consider archive fashion as well because it's so expensive to like build a wardrobe if you're gonna be buying retail price or if you're buying pieces, every collection. Can you imagine that? It's not sustainable financially and environmentally and also mentally and also I think personally it also lies and depends on your values as a person I've always gravitated towards the past I love nostalgia I love looking back instead of like looking forward even with music even with films that sort of interest has trickled down to my fashion choices it all started with a Rick Owens boots and that was in 2016 and I stumbled upon the real wheel. And then I saw these boots that I really loved back in 2009. I thought I would never see the shoes ever again. And it proved me one thing that it's not too late to retrace and find those archive pieces that help you build your inspiration, build your mental mood board. For me, that was like the avant-garde movement, the avant-garde moment. Those were like super instrumental in honing and in shaping my personal style. Like it's hard to take that away from me. No matter how stylish the current trends are, I just can't relate to it. Number two, shopping is easier and quicker. I don't stay up late or I don't 
spend too much time going through different online shops. I would just casually check it every once and again. And if I don't find anything, then I move on. I'm very easy. Like if I find something that I love, then I get it. Before collecting archive as well, I feel like my mental mood board was so, so out of place. There are looks that I want from Celine, a jacket that I want from Boma. It just doesn't make sense. Ever since I've tried collecting archive, it's more uniform, it's more structured. I think financially as well, it's hard to build Let's just be real, it's hard to build a capsule wardrobe or a personal wardrobe if you're just gonna buy current pieces from high-end brands. Not unless you're like super mega rich, but if you're just a regular person who happens to love fashion, it's gonna be a struggle. And I choose not to be broke for fashion. I don't shop all the time, it seems like it. And even if I shop, I must say that the pieces that I have been buying recently were just under $300. Anything over $300, I really try to like think and rationalize. And that's what collecting archives taught me as well, is how to shop sensibly, shop responsibly, because at the end of the day, it's just gonna be a mountain of clothes in your closet. So number three is being more sustainable being more responsible. I try to put more thought into shopping and with knowledge as well, you become more responsible. The more that you value it, the more that you enjoy that certain piece. Like it doesn't matter if it's a, a jacket from Comme des Garçons in the 90s, but knowing that it's a brand that has inspired a lot of designers, you're holding something very valuable and important. Number four, I stopped carrying with logos. I'm not saying I didn't fell on those trend traps when I was younger. Of course I did. I remember being obsessed with everything off-white. I even bought two belts from off-white. I cannot with logo anymore. Wearing logos or logo fashion is lazy fashion. The narrative is just blah. I mean, don't get offended. It's just my personal opinion. I'm not. Anna Wintour. Collecting Archive has definitely steered me away from that logo mania path. And the last thing that I've learned is not being jealous. And I think it's really important nowadays to reiterate the value of your own personal style and your mental health as well. Fashion can be amazing and inspiring, but at the same time, it can be too overwhelming and it can create a very dark place in your mental health. did that before. There are times that I've been comparing myself, my clothing to other people. And at the end of the day, we can only accept what we have. I don't want to say life is short, but I want to say life is precious for you to be like torturing yourself by comparing yourself to others. I collect archive because I was purely drawn to it. It's my way to retrace and to relive that fantasy. And being a millennial, I think I'm lucky that I was able to live through the archive years. Even before I became familiar with the term archive, I've already been collecting Helmut Lang back in like 2011 in thrift stores. So I guess I've been doing this whole thing before I even realized it. Anyway, this is the pickup segment of this vlog. So for the try on pickups, I'll be doing it by designers. So I have Mugle, I have Balenciaga, Yoji Yamamoto, Helmut Lang, and of course Rick Owens. All of these are secondhand. Some of them are archival pieces. First on the list is this Balenciaga bag from spring 2017. It's called the Air Hobo bag. It's inspired by the Moroccan stool chairs. I just love the quirky design. Very banal chic. Anyways, this is a nice bag. It's a great weekender bag. If you want to provoke people, provoke the society, this is the bag to get. And I love it. It's because of the odd shape. And I love that this bag is an echo of his recent full 2022 collection. He sent out models wearing like trash bags. This may have been unpopular by now. I think this will blow up soon. Remember when the motorcycle bag was like forgotten and then now a lot of people are like trying to get their hands on the classic motorcycle bag. I don't care if it's gonna blow up or not, if it's untrendy or not, but I love this. I bought it from Mercury Japan for like less than $270. And I'm so excited because in a few weeks time, we'll be going on a holiday. It's a 
definitely gonna bring this back for sure. And between those trendy bags that we're seeing today, I would happily choose this one because it's an ugly chic bag. And that's what I love about collecting archive. It creates an aesthetic excellence in you. And another piece from Balenciaga that I picked up recently. This is an iconic boot, super, super popular at that time. I think everyone wore this from Alexa Chung to fashion bloggers. I'm a bit sad that this boot has lost its appeal. I found this on Vestier Collective for $100. $50. If you look online, the resale price of this is still around $500 to like $700. This boots is still highly regarded in the fashion scene. Been seeing a lot of like cutout boots and a lot of like chunky platform boots. So just wait and see. If the bag was an iconic bag from Demna's tenure, this is a product of Nicola Gesquier's work in Balenciaga during that time. Apart from Rick Owens, I was following Nicola's work. And also this boots is still unworn. It's basically pristine. They may not be the most comfortable, but it's super pretty. We'll see how it looks like. So this is the boot on. Looks so, so pretty. Damn, this is size 41 and it's so narrow and tight. And it's like a grayish green color. I just love archive fashion because the older it gets, the more special it becomes. And the next set of pieces are from Helmut Lang. So this one is a great bag that I bought for a very long while. I have my Andy Mooley Mr. Tote bag that my mom gave me when I went to the Philippines. She has found it in a random thrift store and apparently that bag was just on the ground and people were just stepping on it. I know it's crazy how disrespectful. I was so surprised because my mom would have no clue who Andy Mooley Mr. is but she bought it for me. I think it's just, you know, serendipity. This is the Helmut Lang bag. It's made from a soft lambskin leather and it's made from Japan. Most Helmut Lang pieces are made from China, made from Vietnam. There's nothing wrong with that, but there's still something special when a piece of garment is made from Japan. I've seen a photo of Mary Kate Olsen wearing this big tote bag and I'm like, oh, maybe this could work. And I only paid $99 for this and it's from Mercury, Japan. It's got a short handle, so it's more of like a, a handle tote. It's like a garbage bag, right? Yeah, so the helmet line pieces that I have picked up were just common blazers. But the special thing about this, these are made from Japan. And I only bought this both in total for $70. And you can't go wrong. I think I needed some fitted blazer, like a really tailored and tight-fitting blazer for some outfits. I do notice that I tend to gravitate towards oversized. Now, people are more interested with the slimmer silhouette. We're going back to tailoring. We're going back to owning something that really accentuates our body type, our shape. You all need something like this. I mean, oversized will never go out of style, I think, by now. It's a staple, but do not underestimate the, the power of a great fitting blazer. So I'm going to be trying on the first blazer. I think this is a women's helmet playing. It's just a nice, smart dinner jacket. And what I love about this, it fits my wrist perfectly. And with the baggy jeans, it's perfect. I'm wearing just a unique low denim jeans from the Jill Sander collaboration and I'm wearing my tabby boots and this is the helmet leg bag. I love this look, it's very 90s. It frames me perfectly. I'm very short. Finding blazers that fit me is a Herculean task. I think I'll keep this forever and I won't be looking anymore because this is the one. This is definitely the one. So this is the helmet leg blazer number two. Helmut Lang blazer, slim and skinny fit, perfect for those boring human functions. If I have to go to a meeting, if I have to go somewhere professional-ish, this is like my LinkedIn outfit. It's just a very simple blazer. It has a really classic lapels and I think I'm gonna be wearing this in the summer and with like a really baggy pants too. It is a great contrast, very cinch and 
very slim line. I love how it fits my body. I have been wearing this a lot at work, so I'm quite happy. And yeah, for the price that I paid, I think I've done well. Next piece of garment that I picked up, it's a brand new pre-owned Mugle blazer. I only bought this for $80 or $70. I mean, why would you buy a blazer from Zara that costs like $130? I just cannot brain that. And it still has a tag, perfect investment, a perfect fit. And I just love how it accentuates his shape. It's so beautiful. Accentuates the shoulder in a not so exaggerated way. So another Yugle piece that I pick up recently is this handbag, the Yugle. It's a very shocking orange, a shocking carrot orange. It's a beautiful color though, in a Balenciaga kind of way, I must say. It's more of a warm orange than a Barbie orange. It's not for me, it's for my partner, Loren. I bought this because he was looking for a hysteric glamour Birkin bag, which we haven't found. So I've encountered this, and I think this is way, way better. It's made from cross green leather. It's a nice handbag. I love the Birkin style. It has that playful nuance, playful sensibility. You can definitely store your essentials or your more than essentials. Sunglass, a water bottle, some knickknacks. Your lunch. Japanese marketplace is a godsend. It's nice. I love it. We're almost halfway done with the rest of the pickup. So please comment down below which one is your favorite pickup so far. My next one, Yoji Yamamoto Chester Coat. This is from Wise. I wouldn't say it's a diffusion line. Wise is a more streetwear umbrella of the main line Yoji Yamamoto, but nevertheless, the pieces are amazing and and it still resonates the strong Yoji Yamamoto spirit. Super long and super oversized. You can't go wrong with this fit. This coat is definitely a summary of poetic and avant-garde craftsmanship. As you can see, the fabric is polyester, but it has that wrinkled treatment. It's intentional, by the way. I got this for Loren as well, but I think in the future, I'll be borrowing this because I can see myself wearing this. The size two, which is like a medium. If I wear this, still gonna be able to layer inside. It won't provide you that warmth. It's perfect for spring if you still wanna have that dark fashion style. And with Yoji Yamamoto, his brand has been around for so, so long. He has amassed a lot of pieces. You will never run out of a great find from Yoji Yamamoto, irregardless of the season. But this is what I need so far. As you all know, it's been super freezing here in Australia for the last couple of weeks, couple of months, and I've been wearing them nonstop at work. And this is also from Wise, and it's a size three. It doesn't look ridiculous on me. I only paid like $75 for this. Insane. It's almost in perfect condition. And yeah, it's just instant dressy attire every time I wear this. Yes, yeah, so we've almost finished this whole lot. This is gonna be fun because this is gonna be from Rick Owens. Let's start. This is, can I sit down? Pillar skirt from Rick Owens, made of cotton, viscose, and elastane. It's just a midi skirt. I bought this because it was so, so cheap when I got this. And this is from the recent Larry collection, Fall Winter 2019. And yeah, it's a structured skirt, which I really love. I don't like it when it's too thin and flimsy. I love the structure. It creates a great foundation. Beautiful slit in the back for easy movement and pockets as well. Yeah, simple and easy. Despite it being from the recent collection, I think Rick has always injected this piece in every collection. Like I've seen this from Walrus, I've seen this from Glitter. It's one of Rick's mainstay. And from mid skirt, we move on to a longer skirt. This is from the Glitter collection. It's a pillar skirt. I thought at first when I bought this, it was floor length. Like the ones that we've seen in Fogashin collection. Was it Fogashin? So that was a beautiful collection. So I thought maybe I'll get something like that. And this was from Mercury Japan. It was only like $120 and it's a perfect condition. And I love the net ribbing that was employed for the waist so it doesn't move. I find lately with Rick Owens pieces, especially with skirts, 
They tend to move around or like drop. Maybe I should get a smaller size. So this one I think is a better design, I would say. I think it's a bias skirt pattern as well. I love how it moves. I love how it, you know, feels in the body. It's lined with silk, so it feels luxurious and it's velvet so it's more stark and more strong as compared to other garments i know you're thinking that i have so many skirts but this one's super super different trust me morticia adams silhouette oh my god this is probably one of the pieces that will be able to push me out of my comfort zone because this is a two top. I bought this because I was so in love with the first look from the Fogashin collection and I thought maybe that will create a similar look. Again, I'm drowning with my delusions because they're super, super different when you try it on. It's like basic 90s minimalist tube top yeah it's very very sexy i look like a drag queen when i try this on nothing wrong with it but it's fun also if it doesn't work that way i can always use this as a maxi skirt well it has a nice boning in the back almost like a corset and i love that it's got a pocket so it's gonna be fun trying this on um, please don't laugh i don't know if i am able to pull this off so that's how it looks like Maybe I'll wear this for Halloween as Victoria Beckham, Posh Spice. But for this styling, I'm just gonna be wearing this with my Taylor Rick Owens just to keep it androgynous. I have been seeing a lot of this minimalist 90s to dress in a lot of menswear. And I love this dress because it reminds me of the photo shoot that Rick Owens and Michelle Lamy did like years and years ago. But like it's so, so tight. Somehow, it does feel liberating to wear something something feminine this is something that i'll have to like play around and experiment i have to be honest i can't see myself wearing this outside without being too overly conscious of my body of how it fits it made me realize how 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 hard it is to be a girl i think how to dress up while considering society considering the male gaze and all of that things so mad props for all the women out there who are expressing themselves truly and freely so you guys are giving heaps of inspiration and last but not the least it's called the bella pants and it cost me zero dollars this was a present from a good friend shout out to christos for sending this to us us because I think Loren has fallen in love with this and I think there is no way that he's gonna give it to me. It looks way way more perfect on him than on me because of his height, of his build. And the story behind this, it's funny because Christos house helper or something or assistant accidentally placed this in a dryer so it shrunk to bits and this is the shrunken version it's very similar to the Bauhaus pants fit wise it's cleaner and very warm 100% wool and it's just an amazing construction you know there's something masculine and powerful when you wear this and also it's a drop crotch pants which means it's above and beyond a usual boring pants and big pockets, we love big pockets. Zipper, easy access-ish. So beautiful. So again, thank you Christos for sending this beautiful piece. I mean, you could have sold it, but he chose to send this to us. As you can see, it's slightly big on me. Nevertheless, I can still wear this. I'll just have to tighten the drawstrings. Actually, if I wear a wedge or a heel, it will compensate for the length. It has that certain weight on it. Me and Loren might just need to take turns on wearing these beautiful pants. Unfortunately, we've reached the end of this video. Anyway, thank you again for watching. I hope you enjoyed the long video and I'll see you again when I come back from my holiday. Thank you again for watching. Follow me on Instagram and you can always send me a message if you've got any questions or if you've got any suggestions on what I should cover for next. Stay safe and thank you for your support. Love you all.